Okay, so in the last few minutes, we we saw a couple of queries, and let's just continue and add more and more concepts. <clears throat> so let's take a quick revision of what we discussed so far. We looked at the select everything. So we, where we use a select star, it'll just give you everything from the table. Then we looked at some filtering aspects where we said that for text use the like operator. We also looked at some filtering where your filter criteria is an integer where we use the equal to. We also tried filtering based on a, a list of values. So where we use the in clause. Then we looked at how to um, filter based on certain text, right? Um, full match criteria kind of a thing. Then when we also looked at how to filter based on partial criteria, we, we use the percentage sign, uh, an exact match versus a non-exact match. Then we played around with dates a little bit. We used a greater than where we filtered our data based on birth date greater than 1980. We also looked at how to use ranges and we also looked at an example where we use the between clause to specify uh, two dates um, between which you want to filter. Okay, so let's proceed. Here I wanted to throw in a new concept called as calculated columns. And as the name suggests, it's nothing but you introduce a third column which is not a part of the table based on certain columns that the table already has, right? So for example, if a table has the quantity and the prices for each quantity, you could perhaps introduce a third column and call it as whatever, quantity multiplied by uh, the price, something like that. So let's let's have a look at um, some examples. So let's, let's select some of the tables so that again, it doesn't get too boring. So let's see if we can use the product table. Let's see what it has. So select star from production dot product. Let's see what it has. Again, let me just quickly enter my password. Oops, need to remember this. Okay, so here we have some, some good data and we have list price. Okay, so let's, let's look at some narrow range. Let's look at the name and the list price you know so that we don't look at all the infinite number of columns that this table has okay so a calculated column is nothing but something that you introduce so you say select name list price and let's say you want to introduce a third column and you want to just give a ten dollar increase to the list price so you say list price plus 10 and this is where a concept of alias comes into place alias is nothing but any name that you can give to a column and I'll call this as say adjusted list price you can call it anything I'm just calling it adjusted list price and from production dot product okay let's see how this looks like okay so so if you see that these two are the columns that the table provides. This is basically a column that you introduced. And what you basically did was that whatever was in list price, you just added $10 to it. Okay, so sometimes these things can be really very handy. And you know, as and when you start writing more complex queries, you feel that you know, these things can, can really help you a lot to put, put your logic in certain columns, your inbuilt logic or the logic that you have derived into certain columns for easier querying. Okay, now, since we have started to manipulate and introduce stuff, um, I will introduce you to a few statements that can help you create tables, delete tables and update tables. We looked at something very simple in our previous lesson um, where we just wrote insert into something values blah 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 and it created a table here we are going to take a slightly different approach okay what I want is 
So this statement, which I have highlighted, just displays the result, right? It's not stored anywhere. What I want is actually to store this in a separate table. So how do I do that? We introduce something called as an into clause. So the way it works is you write your logic, right? And then you say whatever is the value you insert into a table, right? You can give some table name. Let's call this as production dot product underscore two. Now, please note that this table doesn't exist right now. So what it is going to do is it's going to execute this query and whatever are the values that are returned, it's going to put it into this table. Okay, so let's complete this. Now, first question is, when this table is created, where will it be placed, in which database? Well, it depends on what context you are running. Right now you are running under AdventureWorks 2012, so it will actually create a table under AdventureWorks 2012. So let me try executing this query. Okay, so 504 rows affected. Now, if we refresh our tables, we should find a new table called product two that has been newly created. Now, let's run a select star from production dot product two. Now, if you see, there's a third column introduced here. This was not a part of the product table, but you wrote your query in such a way that you introduced the third column and the total results of this table is actually pushed into this table called product underscore two. And this is where certain introducing such tables and calculations might become very handy. So imagine that you have a lot of complex logic, right? And you want to break it down into steps. You can keep putting this into separate tables and you know perform calculations. Now I can I can perform some calculations on this table, product two, and I can put that results into another table, right? And in, in, in this course, we might not go in too much depth about temporary tables and permanent tables, but let me just give you a very high level overview of that. What we just created is a permanent table, meaning this table is actually stored in the database. Whoever connects this database can actually view this table, right? There is, second, there is a second form of table that you can create called as temporary table. Temporary table, let me show you. Let me create, let me push this result into another table. Here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write hash followed by a table name. And I'll call this as say temp table, temp name, something like this. This hash actually tells SQL Server that whatever table it's going to create, should be a temporary table. Temporary table meaning this table is visible only for you. It's just a very um, rough table for you. Uh, as soon as you end this session, meaning if you just close this window or open a new connection, this table will just vanish, right? You'll not have access to this table. So it's kind of, if you have again, some complex logic where you just want to push some results to a temporary table, work with the temporary table and then finally dispose of the table, that's where you know that's one of the places where temp tables can really be useful let's let's try to run this query so 504 rows affected now if i write select star from hash temp name you will find those values right now as i said this is a temporary table if i open a new session right and run this query in this new session, it will actually say invalid object name because in this session, it, it cannot see your temporary variable, it's sorry, your temporary table that you created, right? So just you need to be a little careful when you're using these things. Okay, we looked at how to push data into a table. Let's look at how to delete data from a table. Now, this is actually super simple. Let's, let's play around with our new table that we introduced, the product underscore two. Let's say you want to delete the row that has a name called bearing ball, 
right? So the way you do it is delete, delete is an inbuilt keyword. You say delete from my table, you give the table name, and then you just filter on the rows where you want, you know, the deletion to occur. So delete from product two, where name like, we use the like operator, right? Before when we were working with text, bearing ball. Now, one thing to note here is it's going to do an exact match here, right? We don't have the person sign or something. So it's going to actually look for the word called bearing ball and going to delete that row completely. Let's give it a try. It says one row affected, which means there was at least one row which matched this criteria. Now, if I run a select star from this table, you will not find that bearing ball row. See? Now, since we didn't use a partial match, there, there are some rows which have at least that word called ball bearings, but it will not get deleted. But you get the idea. Okay. And finally, I also wanted to tell you something about an update statement. An update statement is nothing but something that updates a given table, a given row, right? So <clears throat> let's run through an example. The way you write it is using the keyword update followed by your table name. So it basically says that update this table. And then you give a condition as to what should be the update and which row should it affect. So you say set name equal to Let's say, let's say update this one, blade, right? Set name equal to blade underscore new. I'll just call it new. The updated value should be new, where name like blade, <coughs> sorry, blade. Okay. Now, please note, you are assigning this new value to this column. So that's why we don't use the like operator here. What we are saying is update this table where name is blade and whatever rows qualify that criteria just update the name to blade underscore new let's see what happens now it says one criteria match what you one of the rows matched your criteria and then we say select star from production dot product two and we should find our updated value here <coughs> see there you go so this is like a high level overview of how you would insert some data, delete some data <clears throat> and update some data. And again, these kind of temp tables and permanent tables really, really help you when you have super complex logic and you just want to, you know, um, um, cut them into smaller pieces and then work with smaller tables kind of a thing. The other criteria where I could think of is um, I was working with a table recently which had like millions and millions and millions of row and I just wanted to, you know, do some analysis on, on a portion of the data, right? One way is, of course, to use square clauses and stuff like that. But what I did was that I just pushed a thousand rows from there into a temp tables and I worked with it. It's just more faster. So depending upon what things you use, uh, you might want to use a temp table or a permanent table um, and so on and so forth.